to be top again. It's the dream of the club. Come on, yes, please. The aim is definitely to win something. My best advice: be you, be yourself. Ah, oh, sorry, I'm just not, I'm not going to play the whole thing. How are we doing, everyone? Sam here, United People's TV. Christian Eriksen has given his first interview, first full interview as a Manchester United player. That there, the, the video that he just published on Twitter after it was announced. And in this video, I'm going to run through that full interview, every single detail, run through everything he said, talked about his ambitions, why he came to the club, what he wants to achieve at the club. And look, I'm excited. Yeah, it's not Frankie de Jong. Yes, we still need more. Yes, it's just a free transfer, but you can be excited about a free transfer and still have the ambitions to chase more in the summer transfer window. They're not mutually exclusive. It's not as if you accepting a free transfer as a good signing means, oh, you're a Glazer sympathist, which is a weird thing that I've seen pushed today. Uh, don't try and uh, slate United fans by being excited at signing. What is a top level player? in Christian Eriksen. It really, really is. I'm going to run through this full interview now, so make sure you leave your comments down below about what you think of the interview, but let's get straight into it and waste absolutely no time whatsoever. He's asked, you know, how does it sound being a United player? He goes, well, it's a bit weird. I never thought it actually happened, so to be here, it's special. Yeah, nice, like that. You mentioned that, that maybe you didn't think it was going to happen for you. It's a club you've always been linked with. He said, um, I think from my career path before the incident in the Euros, the planning wasn't to go back to the UK at all. I was thinking my time to Manchester United was before. And we all thought that as well. Christian Eriksen, we're like, it feels a couple of years. It feels a few years too late. And maybe it will prove to be a few years too late. But at this moment in time, I'm excited about it. And I, I would love to think that Christian Eriksen can... I told you, the only reason he was going to stay at Brentford was because if he stayed at Brentford, his ambitions weren't burning bright enough to take him to Manchester United. And no offence to Brentford, but he would have just been happy staying at Brentford, uh, staying in the uh, middle mid-table mid in Premier League. Nice life in London, fine. But he's come to United because he's still got that ambition to really chase himself at the very, very top. Uh, and that's basically what he's saying there. And look, you can slate Christian Eriksen if you want to slate Christian Eriksen. Statman Dave here with a cracking little stat there. Since moving to Spurs in 2013, Eriksen's registered more assists from set pieces than any other Premier League player. And I'll tell you one thing. We are absolutely abysmal. With a capital A-B-Y-S-M-A-L from set pieces. Free kicks, corners, the works. Conceding them and not scoring from them. So all of a sudden, if we've got the man who literally has created more goals from set pieces, that's going to be an immediate tick and an immediate bonus to him coming to the club. Like that. Move on here. He goes, you talked about Eric Ten Hag. How influential was Eric getting you to Manchester United? This is an important point he's, he's talking about here. He goes, very. I want to come here and play football. I don't just want to come here for the logo itself. I want to come here and play. Obviously, to speak with the manager and hear his ideas and have conversations with him on the football terms was great and ideal for me to get the decision and the possibility of coming to United. He was asked a little bit further there. Uh, Ajax's teams were traditionally a very attacking style of football. You know, where was that something that, you know, attracted to you to United and then Ten Hag? And he goes, yeah, I think my style of play hopefully will fit in with his ideas and hopefully it's something that will connect in a good and positive way. So, of course, his style of football, I think it suits me and it absolutely will suit him. If you look at how we lined up in that preseason tour, we lined up in the 4-2-3-1. We had Fred sort of dropping deeper, as not as the number six per se, but as the deeper of the three midfielders with two number eights in front of him. And it was Bruno who had a fantastic preseason tour, I think so anyway. And then he had the other number eight. You had McTominay, was a bit invisible. You had Donny van der Beek, was a little bit invisible. Who's going to drop straight into that? And probably start against Brighton. Now, he might not start against Brighton, given that he's a few weeks behind. I'm sure he'll be doing his own fitness uh, uh, regime back whilst waiting for the club to return from pre-season tour. But maybe he's not going to be completely and utterly fit. But look, he's buzzing. Looks like a little tourist there at Carrington. <laughs> Thumbs up. The little cracking uh, cliche pose. But his style of play, he will be, he will kind of stand out from everybody else in that midfield. The perfect foil for Bruno Fernandes, I feel. Uh, if Bruno Fernandes is somebody who's He's got a little bit of a hot head. He's got a little bit of a streak. He looks for the Hollywood. He looks up. He likes to look for the... It's not as if Christian Eriksen hasn't got that vision, but Christian Eriksen 
doesn't play hot potato. He's happy to just have the ball. Give me the ball. It's fine. I'll, I'll just I'll take it. I'll I'll absorb pressure from a couple of players and just pass it to somebody else. It's part of the game that we still need. It's part of the reason why Frankie De Jong is still going to be such a transformative signing. Uh, and I, just for the for the style of play that Ten Hag has, the problems we have in our midfield, Christian Eriksen really is a top draw signing. And you shouldn't just be looking at it going, ah, oh, Sam, it's just a free transfer. How can I get excited about a free transfer? You can make smart free transfers. You really can. And I think we've made one there. Him talking about uh, sort of the time he spent down at Brentford. Uh, uh, what did he say? Do you feel like maybe you've had unfinished business in the Premier League? He goes, no, I think back uh, when I wanted to try something new and left first after more than seven very good years, wanted to try uh, something new in Italy, of course. He won the title in Italy with Antonio Conte. He goes, it started off tough, but ended up being a very good place. Obviously, I was planning to fulfill my contract there, but, well, we all know what happened there. Then he went to Brentford, and that's where he sort of, he came back. Uh, he, he showed that he's ready and still able to compete and influence games. He, he transformed the second half of the season, really, for Brentford. I don't imagine he'll have a significant uh, an impact at Manchester United. I still consider him, and I don't mean that in a disrespectful way, but a supplementary signing. I don't think it's enough for our midfield this year. And I'm not going to get uh, blown away and, and sort of distracted by the idea that we still need more players inside that midfield and we still need Frankie de Jong. But Ericsson on a free transfer... I think it's a smart, in the same way that Madisea might not be a transformative signing for Manchester United, I think it's a smart signing. And I like smart signings. And therefore, Christian Eriksen falls right slap back in that category of smart signings. He was asked about that time down in Brentford. He said, again, it was a lovely time. It goes well, we stayed up in the league. And of course, the atmosphere with the club was turning into something very positive. I'm forever grateful for what they did. They showed interest. They showed they care from day one. And obviously that made a big, big difference for Christian Eriksen. It gave him the platform to come back. Of course, spent time training with Ajax's youth team. Uh, and maybe that was where um, Eric Ten Hag had a, close eye, had a close look at him and realized and knew, yeah, okay, he's still got it. And that's may, that might be, maybe Eric Ten Hag will be asked about that in his first press conference ahead of Brighton. Maybe he'll say something on that. He said down there, I've got, it's, it's the way the football world works. Eh? First, first away game, we were playing Brentford. He goes, I've definitely, I've spoken to most of them and said what the future holds. Of course, it'll be fun to see the fans in a stadium. Hopefully he gets two assists against Brentford whilst wearing a United shirt. At least not because I've got a good mate called Adam. and I'd love to rub it in his face. Sorry, Adam. I know you're not watching this because why would you watch it? But look, I'm, I can't, I can't lie, man. I'm excited about it. I am. And maybe it's just because I've been, Fucking starved of midfield signings so long that when a, when a good one comes along, I'm probably going to latch onto it, even if it's not exactly what we need. And it isn't because, of course, we know what we need. But I thought this was a good question here. It was asked about um, United history with creative playmakers. Uh, although kind of Cantonazzi, I suppose he was a creative playmaker from the front. He goes, how does it feel to know they're talking about you in the same breath? He goes, it means a lot. Like you said, it's a club with a lot of history. A lot of big players have been here. And to be on that list, first of all, I'm here to play and prove I can be on this list. But looking back, it's a big list with big names. I don't think anybody's going to be talking about him really in the same vein as... I haven't really seen anybody kind of talking about him in the same vein as Scholes or Charlton or Best or Cantona. Maybe Carrick because he's going to be a, a sort of playmaker from deep. And maybe Scholes when he's going in, in that sense. Hopefully we can get somebody who can reliably get those 20, 30-yard pings. But that, that was a big part of Fergie's football, wasn't it? Whether it was Scholes or Rooney or Carrick. That person who, who had the ability to sit 15 yards below uh, um, the halfway line and just ping a 20, 30-yard accurate pass all the time, three, four times a game, was a really big asset for United. And we kind of lost that. Maybe Ericsson can bring that back. He was asked about what his ambitions were for the season ahead. He said, I'm pretty sure the ambitions are, of course, to be on the top again. Of course they are. The dream of the club and the history. I mean, he's mentioned history too much, but I suppose that's all we've got. I think the only aim is to go as high as possible and the aim is to, to win something. I don't know what the aim is this year for Manchester United. I know what my personal aim for Manchester United is. It's just to feel this system is really getting embedded into the club in every single fiber of the club. And we're just a cohesive unit on the pitch, off the pitch, all putting in the same direction. And even if we just miss out on the top four, as long as everything is smooth, and it won't be smooth, of course, wrong word, as long as everything feels like it's heading in the right direction, then I will be happy with it. And of course, winning some silverware on top of that probably accelerates the process. Winning the Europa League certainly would accelerate the process. The FA Cup and the League Cup, why not? 
But of course, it's just going to be cups this year because we're going to get nowhere near the league. Uh, he was asked about his sort of long-term future with the club. He goes, look, I don't know. I think I've read some of you had to be 35 before you can retire. So we're 33 when the contract ends. And it's, it's unusual, I suppose, for United to give a three-year contract out to someone who's over the age of 30. And certainly in the Christian Eriksen situation, given the health conditions. Uh, but it's a, it's a show of faith. It's a, it's a risk from United in that sense. And I hope that Christian Eriksen will repay that. Trust that we've put in him with that three-year contract. And he'll feel that, right, okay, this club trusts me and has put faith in me. And he'll repay that. Let's hope so anyway. He goes, like I said, you never know what football holds. I've experienced that. Something can happen, so you really have to go one day at a time. Say one day at a time and see what comes. But no, I'm just pleased to be here. He goes, you talked about your ambitions there with United, with the national team. And of course, he wants to get back into that squad for the World Cup. Have, have Denmark qualified for the World Cup? I don't know. I presume they have. But Christian Eriksen is officially a red. Uh, I don't think today was a was an was an open training session day. I think today was a day where Eric Ten Hag there was a big debrief at the club, about an hour where everybody sat there and listened to uh, Eric Ten Hag, and Mitchell Van der Gag, and Steve McLaren about this is what we learned from the tour. Tomorrow might be the case where we see Christian Eriksen training for the first time, and tomorrow should be where we see Lissandro Martinez announced as an official Manchester United player. Now I know there's a lot to be frustrated about this summer, and I know there's still so much more to do. But if you can't get excited about Christian Eriksen coming to the club and seeing the idea and the prospect of what he could do there and the fact that he can bring those set pieces to us, it's such a big weakness of ours, then you be you. But I'm going to be excited by it. I'm not blown away by it. Our business isn't finished by it. But the fact that I'm excited by a free signing doesn't make me a Glazer sympathist. It, I'm being realistic in the idea that I think it's a very smart signing and I really hope it works out for us across the course of three years in the same way it worked out for Brentford in that six months that they had with Christian Eriksen. But look, Christian Eriksen, welcome to Manchester United. Let me know what you think about that first full interview in the comments below. Tomorrow we might get Lissandro Martinez's and that's going to be an interesting one. But it's good to see a new signing coming in alongside Tyrell Malasia. That's two signings really signed to play the Ten Hag style. And we're moving in the right direction and we saw that in preseason. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Make sure you subscribe if you're new.